Good evening, everybody. Happy Thursday and welcome back to our Bible study series, Fit for Life, The Power of the Spiritual Disciplines. My name is Brianna Kimball. I am the Assistant Director of Christian Education here at Fresh Start Christian Center. And I'm thoroughly happy to be before you again. If you've been with us for the past few weeks, you'll see that we are diving into the spiritual disciplines. And one of the purposes of this course is to um, help believers enjoy the hope and the stability that we have in Jesus Christ through these disciplines. So even though we're virtual, I always say please interact with one another in the comments. I will be asking questions, type your answers, um, because we can still engage even though we are virtual, all right? So before we get into the lesson, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would, as always, fill this room. I pray, God, that your word would come alive to someone listening today. I pray that transformation would ensue. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open the eyes of their understanding, of their hearts, of their minds. I pray, Father, that any confusion or doubt or discouragement pertaining to the disciplines um, would be cast away now, Lord. Um, we lay everything at your feet and we present ourselves as living sacrifices. We want to learn from you. We want to hear from you. So I pray that anything else, God, that will form a distraction in this moment during this lesson will be put aside. Holy Spirit, have your way. It is a joy to be able to dive into your word together. In Jesus name, amen. All right, so I hope you guys have your pens, your paper, your tablets, so you can take notes and have your Bibles ready. Um, today, we are going to be talking about the discipline of faith as well as hope and encouragement. So I'm excited about this one, guys. So let's get started. All right, so while biblical encouragement does include affirmation, it is not solely based on making an individual feel better. It is about ushering them into knowing and obeying God. This, however, of course, does require a level of faith. So what we plan to do tonight is uproot possible misconceptions regarding encouragement, posture ourselves as believers to incorporate faith and hope as a spiritual discipline, and also um, how we can effectively use these disciplines um, in order to endure life's trials. So as believers, we need biblical encouragement, all right, and we are to give it to others. My desire is that this lesson will cause reflection on the following questions. What role has encouragement played in your Christian walk? And how has the level of your faith impacted your ability to encourage others and yourself? Biblical encouragement is a biblical principle and should be developed as a discipline for daily use. There is a responsibility that we have through encouragement, and this lesson will highlight not only the do's and the don'ts, but the biblical emphasis on why encouragement is needed as a spiritual discipline. So what is biblical encouragement? So perhaps many of us fail to experience and extend encouragement because we don't yet know really what it is. But before we start speaking about what it is, let's talk about what it isn't. And that term is known as discouragement. All right. So discouragement means to dishearten, depress or frustrate another. Discouragement is to dishearten, depress or frustrate another. No man is off limits to the threat of encouragement. As long as there is an enemy and we live in a fallen world, we are unfortunately at risk for discouragement. A man who is discouraged has lost courage, has lost heart, has lost the will to fight, and a discouraged man is therefore a defeated man, which is why persistent discouragement generally leads to despair and or defeat, all right? Therefore, to encourage is to impart courage to someone so that they can be sustained in a difficult situation. The Greek word for encourage, and I want everyone to say this with me, is parakaleo, parakaleo, right? Um, and this is used in Hebrews 3, 12 through 13, which we will get to in one minute. Um, but it is used generally in the New Testament to describe not only giving comfort to someone, but it also involves exhortation, urging, strengthening, and even appealing. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil or unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another daily, 
as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So if an overexposure to sin causes a hardened heart, then being built up and encouraged daily will prove just the opposite. It will keep our hearts soft, pliable, and receptive to the Lord. If we remember, it was a heart of unbelief in which kept the wilderness generation out of the promised land. Therefore, we must take care to cultivate environments of belief. And we need community to do this. It is in relationship with other believers that we find the encouragement and the grace that we need for the fight. Community is a commitment. Community is a commitment, all right? And we will speak more about the aspect of community as it relates to fellowship because fellowship is actually one of the spiritual disciplines. So be sure to stay tuned in the weeks ahead as we cover that. All right. So when we exhort one another daily, we are better protected against the deceitfulness of sin. Encouragement through one another keeps us strengthened, right, for what lies ahead. So now that we've spoken about encouragement and we'll come back to that um, later on in the lesson, um, we mentioned the aspect of unbelief as it relates to encouragement. Right. So now's a good time to transition into the topic of faith. Right. So what is faith? The spiritual discipline of faith is the belief in Jesus required to face life challenges. It requires endurance, it requires patience, and it requires perseverance. According to Hebrews 11 and 1, and I'm going to read this one in the Amplified Version, the scripture in the Amplified Version. It says, now faith is the assurance, the title, deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Faith is a substance, the underlying basis of things hoped for. Faith and hope are definitely related, however, they are both distinct. All genuine hope is based on faith. Hopes that are not based on faith are just wishful thinking. Hope that is not based on faith is just wishful thinking. Faith refers to the present tense, more about the present, and hope is always referring to the future. So scriptures such as Romans 8, 24 through 25, which reads, in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This shows us that hope speaks to the future. And Romans 5 and 5 also reads, hope does not put us to shame, right? So this tells us that um, it is confidence more than just a mere wish. Despite the distinction, we rejoice because we can put our trust, confidence, and belief in Jesus, who is and will always be our firm foundation. All right? Is everybody okay? Everybody still with me? Give a thumbs up. You still here? All right. So your training for a life of faith, right, requires many areas um, of learning, including building the discipline of faith accompanied by courage and, we mentioned before, patience. Often you will pass through many stages before you finally realize the result of your faith. Sometimes it takes time. As seen in Hebrews 11, which the entire chapter, chapter I do encourage you to read, it's basically known as the Faith Hall of Fame. Um, it took endurance, patience, and deeply rooted trust in God before they saw the fruit of their faith. Their discipline was developed through the trials of life, of what they experienced and what they encountered. For example, Ruth was a woman who left everything she had and followed her mother-in-law, right? That's found in Ruth 1, 16 through 18. Noah followed the commandment of the Lord in building the ark, Genesis 6 and 22. Abraham, right, known as a father of faith, being fully, pre- being fully prepared to sacrifice his son, Genesis 22 and 2. Rahab, hiding the spies that came to scope out Zer- Jericho, hiding the spies that came to scope out Jericho, found in Hebrews 11 and 31. And there are so many more. Like I said, please go and read Hebrews 11. But how does faith and encouragement align? So to the extent of your faith can definitely impact your ability to encourage someone else, but also impact your ability to encourage yourself. 
So there's a, a well-known scripture in 1 Samuel where David um, encouraged himself in the Lord, right? Uh, and what does this really mean? So how many of you guys have ever had a big dream or a big goal, right? So you had the plan and you decided by faith that you were going to go for it, right? You've made up your mind. You were solid. I'm going to do this thing. And then you told someone about it, right? So while you expected encouragement, instead you were met with confusion, disbelief, and doubt, right? This happens often, not only with unbelievers, but sometimes believers who haven't been built up in the discipline of faith, right? So um, we can't always expect people to understand the things the way that we do or see from the perspective that we do. And while it is amazing to have godly encouragers and wise counsel, right, that's beneficial, it's needed, it is also important for us to know how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. So look at it this way, right? Perhaps their doubt could just be a test of your faith. All of the spiritual disciplines are rooted in scripture, whether prayer, study, celebration, fellowship, serving, etc. right? Therefore, to actively engage in the spiritual disciplines, we have to incorporate the knowledge of scripture and ultimately what we know and we learn about God. This is what David did. David knew God. He remembered what God had done for him. He had faith. He uses scripture to encourage himself often. We see this in Psalm 119. It says, my eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. David said, my eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. He meditated on the promises of God. He encouraged himself, meaning he rebuilt his strength, his courage, motivation, and most likely his will, right, to trust God. He encouraged himself in the Lord and not himself. This encouragement was not mere positive thinking or having an optimistic outlook on life, right? His anchor was God. He remembered God's faithfulness and his promises to him. So sometimes there's no one around us in a moment to infuse us with the energy that we need to face a difficult time or a difficult season. But in those moments, we must learn to harness our thoughts by looking to God and his word. We are able to encourage others and ourselves based on our level of faith, our faith, our belief and trust in God and hope. Remember, that's future tense reminds us of the character of God. He is unchangeable. The Bible said he is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he has done the thing before, he can and surely will do it again. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So with our faith, with our faith, we encourage others to believe the God who cannot fail. All right. And just one small caveat about encouragement is it may not come naturally. I've heard that say, well, I'm not a natural encourager. You know, um, even though it doesn't come naturally, you still have the ability to do so. And having a biblical um, understanding of encouragement makes no man exempt from the responsibility. Despite how it is displayed, using the word of God to encourage one another is possible. But just because it's possible, that doesn't make it easy. It doesn't make it convenient. I want everyone to type, it takes effort. It takes effort. All right. So now that we've covered what the definition of encouragement is, what the definition of faith is, um, notice that we use the term biblical right? A lot. And that is for a reason. Uh, there are certain qualifications um, in order for encouragement to be considered biblical. And we'll go into these um, now. So for one, biblical encouragement is grounded in truth. One antagonist, if you will, of encouragement being grounded in truth is flattery, right? Two scriptures, Proverbs 29 and 5, says a man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. Proverbs 26, 28 says a lying tongue hates his victim and a flattering mouth works ruin, right? So I ask you, and we'll go into it. Are you a flatterer or are you an encourager, right? 
The flatterer uses other people's insecurities to serve their own cravings for approval, power, and influence. Let's say that again. The flatterer uses other people's insecurities to serve his or her own cravings for approval, power, and influence. The flatterer wants to gratify the pride and vanity of its quote unquote victim, right? Flattery harbors ulterior motives and looks for favors or reciprocal affirmation, right? On the other hand, encouragement, it, it just tells the truth, right? There's no hidden or selfish reason connected to it. And just a point that I might add, the truth, right? It doesn't always exclude what may hurt, okay? It doesn't always exclude what may hurt for what is true. It's grounded, it stands on truth. It does not overlook sin or error, but confronts it with occasional need of correction. We find this truth in God's word. Any deviation from the principles or precepts that is written in scripture can be considered just an opinion. So the question I ask is if your encouragement does not consist of occasional correction, are you telling the truth? Are you flattering? Or are you just sharing your opinion? All right, so it's a deep question. Um, our opinion at times without um, being intentional tends to focus more on sparing feelings than maintaining the goal, right, from remember from the beginning, of alignment with God through the actions of others. That is the goal. We want people to be aligned with God and therefore exemplified in their actions, okay? Point two, biblical encouragement is Christ-centered. John 15, four through five says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. And that is John 15, four through five. When Jesus walked the earth, he demonstrated this truth for he lived his entire life in complete dependence on the father. The image of a branch gaining all its sustenance and strength from the parent vine is a beautiful description of man's total dependence on God without whom we can do nothing. This is what encouragement should represent and where it should direct us to, remembering that Jesus is our strength. Not being dependent on Jesus can cause us to attempt to produce fruit in our own strength. Whatever the need is, he's the answer. Whatever the circumstance, our abilities do not come from mere words, but the life-giving and sustaining power that comes from fellowship with him. Biblical encouragement highlights Jesus and what he has promised us. It does not point to any reliance on any other being, on any other source, only him. Right. And third, biblical encouragement is done in love. We've all heard the saying, it's not what you say, but how you say it. But when it comes to the Bible and Christianity, it does matter what you say and how you say it. Biblical encouragement is done in love. And by this should be communicated with honesty, genuineness and sincerity. Colossians 4, 6 tells us, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Paul believed that Christians would answer others from biblical truth and that they will work at knowing how to communicate those answers to those who are outside the faith also. It is from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So in order for us to encourage in love, we have to first uh, receive the love of Christ so that our encouragement is made pure. Then it can be evidenced through what we say and what we do. So what does a godly encourager look like? What are some characteristics of a godly encourager? And how do you know if that's you or not? A godly encourager affirms, but does not make excuses for sin indulgence. A godly encourager strengthens hope and faith for the purpose of obedience. One of the core aspects of encouragement is to point to Jesus, right? Thus, increasing our hope, our faith, and helps shape our belief systems concerning all aspects of life. A godly encourager understands the value of community. Remember, community takes commitment 
and fellowship as it relates to encouragement, for we cannot do this alone. And what is so beautiful is that we find the perfect example of what encouragement looks like and sounds like through Jesus Christ. He embodies the truth, focus, and integrity on what encouragement should be in the life of a believer. Yes. So in conclusion, um, encouragement is written about so many times in the Bible for a reason. We are people that are constantly threatened by the troubles of life, but when we are encouraged, we start to live life the way God designed for us to live. God calls us to encourage and build up one another for this reason. We are constantly battling sin, including um, forgetting what Jesus has done for us, and we need to be reminded over and over and over and over again. Encouragement brings this light. Jesus is full of light. The word is light. When you bring encouragement, the goal is to always enlighten and edify. Encouragement requires proximity and a level of vulnerability. Therefore, a common barrier to godly encouragement is isolation. When facing trials, we tend to naturally sometimes want to find safety in retreating and being by ourselves, right? And we'll speak about solitude and how that's beneficial, but in reference to this, it's wanting to pull away from a community or the space where you know you can be edified and enlightened, right? So encouragement imparts courage. Christian courage doesn't mean that there's the absence of nervousness, fear, or trouble, right? It's overcoming this in order to do what God says is right. I came across this scripture during study and I thought that it was really powerful. It's in Isaiah 50 verse 4 and it says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. That is Isaiah 50 verse 4. This scripture speaks to knowing how to comfort inner voices that are troubled and speak to the cases of poor souls. An ability to do this is God's gift. And it is one of the best gifts that we have been given, and we should definitely implement it earnestly. Daily encouragement in the body of Christ helps avoid hardening of hearts, the potential of being deceived by sin, and true biblical encouragement should cultivate humility, courage, and hope in God. When Paul encouraged the early church to walk by faith, he wasn't just offering them like, a, you know, a pity saying just to help them make them feel better in a moment. Um, within his words is a true and a powerful and profound biblical lesson. Struggle and hardships have touched each and every human being's life at some point, right? However, people are distinguished by how they react to these trials. Some of the things that they can see for comfort and confidence, right, only provide temporary relief. God implores us to put our faith in him and not in passing pleasures of this world. So I pray that you were encouraged in your faith by this lesson and in turn can find someone that you can encourage today. We pray that you would stick around as we continue to dive into the spiritual discipline because there's so much in store. And remember, a way to develop discipline is by consistency. So keep showing up, keep praying, keep having the faith, and we're excited to see how God moves in your life. Hello, everybody. Hopefully you got to stick around to the end of our lesson today and that you were thoroughly encouraged and inspired by our lesson on faith and encouragement. Now, if you've been here for the past few weeks, you know that at this time, we have the opportunity to have candid conversations about the lesson, about life, and about the Bible. So some of you may already be familiar with our guest number one, Elder Janae, our Director of Christian Education. And today we also have the phenomenal Minister Tiffany, who is the Director of Youth Engagement here at Fresh Start. All right, so kicking it off, what is your definition of faith? I would define faith as a strong trust or a strong belief in someone or something. Okay. I think having faith is about standing on something that's dependable, mm -hmm. um, even when you don't know the outcome. Mm, that's good. That's good. I don't think my definition is much different than that. I would say that there is a level of consistency that's required with faith. Um, I don't think you can really say that you have faith unless 
it's been tested and proven over time. So I guess I would say it's there has to be an element of consistency and evidence to what you believe, right? Because I have we have faith that this table is going to hold right. some stuff up because right. we've used it before and we mm -hmm. see that it's doing what it's supposed to do. And so mm -hmm. I think it has to be tried and tested over time and you have to see the results of it in order for it to be faith. Durable. Like I, like I, yeah, like yeah, durable. yeah, definitely. That is good. For yeah. me, their answers were great. I was just going to say, uh, very simply, faith is just acting as if until it happens. So mm -hmm. it's putting your belief, it's putting your trust in something and there's also a posture that comes with it. So you're believing the thing, but you're also acting as if you have the thing. Yeah. Um, but of course, we're speaking about faith in God, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing that is haphazard or unreliable or not durable. Right. Um, our faith, the consistent faith, the durable faith, the trustworthy faith always comes from believing and trusting in God alone. Yeah. All right. So on a scale from one to five, what is the current level of your faith? And... How did you get to this level, assuming that it's not a one? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you if it was a one, too. That's um, right. Right, right. I'll go first. I would say that it's a five. Um, and, you know, I know we've done this rating system before, and sometimes we rate kind of high, but it really is. Um, I would say it's a five because uh, if we kind of go back to the definition that we talked about in terms of relying, like Mr. Tiffany said, relying on something trustworthy outside of yourself, um, all of my faith and my hope is in God. Um, there's ain't nothing else yeah, that's gonna right. do it. Um, and that's because I know that I've tried other things that haven't worked. Um, and so I've seen things that are unreliable, mm -hmm. which makes me believe even more in his reliability. Um, and so I would say the reason why I survive is because I've tried other things, I've tested other things. And when those things failed me, even when I sometimes want to go back and say, oh, maybe I'll try this again. Maybe I'll try my own way, my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. It never works. Um, and it always just circles back to how much he is unfailing, unyielding, consistent. And there's always fruit to the faith that I have. Mm -hmm. That's good. It was like that. I was like, all right. <laughs> Put a bow on that. Yeah, I would also say I'm at a five. My <laughs> faith is at a five. And it's because I've known it when it was at a one. Okay. And yes, I, okay. ooh, ooh. I've seen the fruit that it didn't bear, uh, mm -hmm. a lack of faith, disbelief, all of those things bear no fruit because, yes. you know, I didn't have anything to stand on or I wasn't ooh. willing to put um, effort to believing in something greater. So mm -hmm. I mean, over the years and with all of the experiences that I've had, I've come to a place where now my faith is on a five because there's evidence, there's proof that it works, believing in him in the answer yeah. to every problem, every mm -hmm. situation, right. um, everything that I've gone through, like my faith has carried me through. Yeah, yeah, if I can, if I can say yeah. something else, I think that kind of speaks to, the Bible talks often about um, the mustard seed faith, mm -hmm. right? And so that's a like in initial faith, like that's like, you know, when you're, that's a starting mm -hmm. point. Uh, but we shouldn't stay at mustard seed faith as we mature in Christ. And so I think right. to that point, um, if that's where you are in your walk in Christ, genuinely where you are, I think there's hope to look for more, yes. right? Like there's, mm -hmm. and it's not a point of condemnation to be like, oh, I'm at a two, right? Um, yeah. You know, but there is room to expect more. There is mm -hmm. more room to lean on him and more room to trust on him. And you really only get that as you do it. Like, right. Yeah, it's no other way to, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a muscle. There's yeah. no other way to get, to go from faith to faith mm -hmm. until you like put your energy in, and literally put your weight behind it. And so yeah. um, this, I think faith is about graduating and seeing the maturity mm -hmm. um, of going from one phase of your faith to another. Absolutely. And even it touched to the faithfulness of God, because so I was, I wasn't going to say a five. So I felt kind of like, Ooh, what am I going to say? <laughs> I'm going to give it a four, right? And for me, I'm definitely on a journey with God as far as my faith. Yeah. Um, and through, all, through it all, I've seen his faithfulness continually. Yeah. Why I didn't say it was a five is because in order to have faith in something, sometimes you have to release your control. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have an issue with like intellectualism mm -hmm. and rationalizing yeah. and faith doesn't always make sense. Yes. So. I gave it a four because that's something that I'm growing. I wasn't always a four, mm -hmm. but I know that I can be a five. Yeah. And as I continue to test my faith, as I continue to grow with God, to learn his voice, to follow his lead, 
over time I can see. So tomorrow I may be 4.1, you know, like we're growing <laughs> rapidly. It's like yes. a rapid increase. Yeah. But so that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who saw the lesson, we did combine faith and encouragement, right? So some of the questions we're going to tie in faith and encouragement and see how it all has to do with one another. So my next question is what role has encouragement played in your Christian walk and how has the level of your faith impacted your ability to encourage others and yourself? Ooh. Those five. That's a lot of big questions. Yeah, what's a, <laughs> we got to your five. Let's bring the five. Um, so for me, encouragement, I think the encouragement have an adverse effect on me mm. um, when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I think mm. when people encouraged me, I kind of like was self-righteous and mm. and I didn't want to mm -hmm. receive it. Yeah. Um, and... I think that played into like false humility and mm -hmm. like just, you know, having an idea about myself. Yeah. Uh, that kind of put me on a pedestal of setting mm -hmm. gods. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of just took me backwards. So when people would try to encourage me, yeah. um, I would always deflect from it. I would mm -hmm. always like come up with an excuse as to, oh no, I can't do this because mm -hmm. of this. Um, mm -hmm. So I never really received encouragement, but now I think I I take encouragement differently because I realize that encouragement is to point all the glory back to him. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's not me. So when people would encourage me before, I'm like, well, I'm not worthy of that. So don't encourage me because mm -hmm. I, I'm going to fail. Mm -hmm. And realizing that they weren't encouraging Tiffany, they were encouraging the God in Tiffany. Like, like, yeah, it's like, keep me full. Yeah. Um, so I think over time, encouragement has led me you know to him in a place where i can give him all the glory um but it wasn't always that way that's good that's good um i would say for me i think i think i've learned to find encouragement even in situations that don't look like encouragement and this is mm -hmm. this is what i'm what i mean so um i think sometimes we can look at encouragement as just maybe pointing out the good or catering to how we feel. Yeah. Um, but sometimes encouragement is actually opposing how I feel, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I feel like I can't do something right, sometimes it's not, you can do this. Sometimes it's, you got something going on inside of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes mm -hmm. rebuke is an encouragement. Yeah. Um, that kind of sounds like those are the opposite, but I think when you are around people who know you similar to what Mr. Tiffany was saying, when you're around people who know you and know what's inside of you, yeah. um, if you're always looking for encouragement that feels good, mm -hmm. it's not, you, you, mm -hmm. you'll miss the mm -hmm. beauty of hard encouragement, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, and I feel like that builds my faith because it allows me, like I said, to take a different perspective and a different view, even on God, right? Like the, yeah. the Bible says that he disciplines those that he loves, mm -hmm. right? And so, of course, there's encouragement that is really good and that's like beautiful and tells you all the positive things. Yeah. But there's also a side of it where I can find the goodness of God when somebody tells me, get it together, girl. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to act Absolutely. like this. You can do this. You know yeah. you can do this. You know God called you to do it. And sometimes yeah. it doesn't always feel good, but it is the truth. And it does build my faith knowing that there is a multifaceted God that will, that always loves on me, but his love shows up differently. Mm -hmm. And it's not mm -hmm. any less loving because it doesn't feel the way I think it should feel. And so I think for us, like, sometimes we do want the lovey-dovey, mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, like, girl, what happened? Are you okay? You know, mm -hmm. like, and there's a place for that. But yeah. I, what I know to be true is in mm -hmm. the in the body, um, we have to be able to encourage one another in the faith in a way that's not like, just sensual yeah. or sensual um but in a mm -hmm. way that may be a little bit more stern but it's filled with the love of god yeah. and the gospel um and the encouragement that we need mm -hmm. that was really good um and also if you've seen the lesson um you know that we speak about flattery and how flattery mm -hmm. differs greatly yes. from encouragement yes yes, yes, um, yes, yes, so yes for when you were speaking about just like not it always feeling mm -hmm. good um one thing about godly encouragement it's always centered um, around Christ and it's always yes. um, biblical. Like yes. you'll find it in the Bible. It should always point you back to Jesus. Um, for me, I've had a similar experience with encouragement. I think for me, it helped as I matured and as I learned God for myself 
So as my faith started to grow, I needed less encouragement. And like, what yeah. do I mean? I am initially mm -hmm. coming into the faith. I relied heavily on what others saw. Yes. So I didn't see it in me. I did, you know, I'm still learning God. I'm still learning his voice. You yeah. know, what everybody says, listen to God, listen to God. Yeah. Um, but so I realized that over time, I wasn't taking a step unless someone encouraged me to take the step. Mm. And it's not bad when you're starting out, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're you know, still a babe in Christ and you're learning right. the things, but I think over time it became a crutch. Mm. So now I'm not stepping out on faith and I'm not doing what God told me to do yeah. if I don't have someone co-signing with me. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we grow, especially in these disciplines and we learn yeah. what faith is, we learn what, how to read the Bible and study the Bible and we um, implement these disciplines, the point of them all is to grow in God, right? Yeah. To grow to know him better. Absolutely. And you'll notice that your faith will increase, but also your ability to encourage and receive encouragement yes. will differ as well. And, and I think also yeah. the ability to discern, like mm -hmm. you were saying, that yeah. flattery from encouragement. Yeah. And sometimes that's not the other person. Sometimes that's you. Mm -hmm. Like you want to be want flattered. It. Like you know what I mean? Right. And when, and like, you know, the Bible talks about honor and all those things. Give honor to who honor is due and all of those things, right? Yeah. Um so we we're not talking about that. But vain flattery, like mm -hmm. you'll be able to mm -hmm. once you tap into the discipline of faith and knowing yeah. what it is, you'll be able to discern like some of that stuff that in you that's calling mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um and what really needs to be built up right. in it which is your feet mm -hmm. and even in honesty like you grow in honesty because i think that's mm -hmm. a hard concept to grasp yeah like wow like i actually want to be flattered yes. or i have been flattering people because sometimes mm. we do it as a way to preserve feelings yes. but sometimes preserving feelings doesn't increase the faith of others yeah so it's learning discernment it's opening yourself up to god and what he reveals and know that he doesn't condemn he only encourages in love for us to be better yeah 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 amen all right so does the ability to encourage others come naturally for you was it always this way <laughs> um, i'm gonna go first <laughs> i'm gonna say no um so okay right so you know those memes that's like when somebody's crying and you don't know what to do so you just like mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. like that's like kind of me <laughs> i'm like oh guys what do i say mm -hmm. um and so it takes me time like it, it doesn't come like that for me in the moment sometimes it really takes me a minute to think mm -hmm. and then also kind of pairing it what we were talking about before like the discernment that's necessary the person right yeah. um like it yeah. really like like I'm, I'm really not great at it um <laughs> But like, but right, right, right. But like, what I think more biblically about it in terms of like um, exhortation and encouraging people in the face, mm -hmm. I can do that. Like, I'm really, really great at that. But more of a one-on-one -on -one situation, it really is a struggle for me um, because mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. God loves you, um, <laughs> so, which well. may be good enough, you know. Like, maybe that's mm -hmm. and maybe I'm like in the flattery portion, and I'm thinking about how they feel. Maybe I'm thinking about that too much. Um, sure. But I'm mm -hmm. gonna say it's it's not great for me. But if you want like a scripture to encourage you, like I'm gonna always gonna give you that. I'm gonna tell you to pray, rely on the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna give you some scripture. Um, but if you're like crying or something, I need a little time. I'm like somebody, come over, somebody <laughs> save me. <laughs> this is rough for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in the same boat as Elder Janae. But I think for me, it comes more naturally yeah okay mm -hmm. so i think that makes a huge difference for yeah me. Mm -hmm. um but i think that may be a lie like i think that <laughs> only to do with comfortability from okay okay so like i i'm brought back to times at work where people will always come to me with their problems yo like, always but like they would always come always come and tell people to go oh, yeah okay. yeah yeah um so i think they find comfort yeah. so maybe it is natural yeah um but maybe like i think we just have to rely on all these spirit okay. no, that's real if we don't like mm -hmm. we will say the wrong thing we yeah. will, and we and it won't be encouraged randy or it will be mm -hmm. something else so i think in that aspect it comes naturally um when we totally about yeah yeah through us yeah yeah um but I do think relationship and proximity makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. So for me, it does. Like I, has it always been godly encouragement? No, but this the ability to want to help somebody or extend advice or comfort or console. Like I've always kind of been that person where my lesson lied was learning 
when to send someone to God mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. kind of conjure up something just because I have the ability to do so. Yeah. So that comes with discernment, that comes with leading, you know, leading into the Holy Spirit That's true, because yeah. people will come and I don't always have the answers. So what I used to do, I don't do anymore, but like just make something up like <laughs> you know on the spot like you need something i'm gonna give you something and so that sometimes people have to process they yes. have to go through their own journey their own process yes. and sometimes like i can pray with you but like you got to work out your salvation with me yeah. troubling like yeah. you gotta you know go um so that's something that i've learned even even as a natural encourager it wasn't always godly encouragement so mm -hmm. even going through this lesson i had to reevaluate myself like brianna are you always leading people to christ mm -hmm. like are you Mm -hmm. allowing them to sit in their feelings is yeah. this flattery is this you know so even though it comes naturally i feel like with the holy spirit and through all these lessons he's still showing me me and how i can be better like for the sake of the gospel at yeah. large yeah i think you opened up something for me because mm -hmm. looking back i also see how the times where i thought it wasn't natural it was mm -hmm. because i was speaking to unbelievers mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. trying to tell the time and like yeah not totally Mm -hmm. convert them and yeah them, but really like try to consider them what they believe but also not mm -hmm. like water it down. to the side right yeah i'm not um mm -hmm. watering down the gospel but yes you know you came to me yeah you know, you hey lift something or really? feel something or see that i have something that you actually need yeah um so i think that those are the times where i was more hesitant yeah mm -hmm. um so i may have stifled the natural encouragement that could have just flowed yeah mm -hmm. That's good. All right. So just bouncing back to the concept of faith for a little bit. Minister Tiffany, this question's for you. Um, name a time in your life where your faith was tested. How did you persevere? And how long did it take to see the result of your faith? Ooh. This one time? But <laughs> yeah, pick, a, uh, pick a good one. Pick um, like a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. It is that's good. actually great. <laughs> um, that's good. Mm -hmm. But I would say one. All right. So I was, I don't remember what was happening in my life mm -hmm. a lot, obviously, but mm -hmm. um, this was the time I put, everything was going well mm -hmm. and all of a sudden my ears started hurting and mm -hmm. I went to the doctor um, and they were doing tests. There was no idea, like, oh, you have a ear infection diagnosing me with all of the different things, all the yeah. possible mm -hmm. things yeah. diagnosed with the ear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then that, it wasn't getting better. And then they're like, oh, like, we actually think you're losing your hearing. Come in. And I was like, what? Yeah, like, are you okay? <laughs> um, I remember um, I had to pray one fun day and it's me through a sound check and I really could not hear anything. Wow. And um, they're like, oh, you're dead? And I'm like, yep. Um, <laughs> but I really couldn't hear. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in that moment, like, I'm like, I have to stand up here, keep pray mm -hmm. and exhort and encourage these people when I'm literally mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. going through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but in that moment, like something that just switched for me and I realized like, I, I just have to, tr I have to surrender it. Yeah. To trust him yeah. with it. Um, because he hasn't trailed me yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, although it still didn't feel like it was getting better. I didn't, any, my hearing didn't come back when I stepped off the stage. Yeah. Um, but like he proved himself against it, be faithful. And then when I went for the hearing, he said to the man and said, you have perfect hearing. Wow. And I was like, what? <laughs> Cause you're um, and since then I, I've had no issues with my hearing. So wow. I praise God. I've had many testimonies after you. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's to me. That was. Really but you know good. what I like mm -hmm. about that? Like you said, like it didn't change for you. I mean, it's a few things you said. First, you still yeah. persevered, even though, mm -hmm. like, you're literally doing something where yeah. your hearing is required. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but you were still able to persevere and give to people in a space where, you know, people come into the house of the Lord with, you know, everybody thinks their problem is the biggest, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> always, right? Mm -hmm. I think my problem is bigger than yours, yours is mine. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to serve from that space and not allow right. that to take away from the way that you would serve, yeah. I think is beautiful. Yeah. And even how you said, like, when you finish, like, it wasn't, like, at that point, well, hey, maybe you were healed, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, things didn't change immediately. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what we talked about in the beginning, yeah. how it takes time yeah. um, sometimes for these things to happen. 
and mm-hmm. it may not happen as we think it will or you know if if we have an end date for these things yeah. um but giving god the time and the space to be him like you said surrendering mm-hmm. that to him i think was is really beautiful and really key in terms of faith is like still doing still yeah. showing up and yeah. even if it doesn't look like it's going to end mm-hmm. still trusting him for the outcome how long was it that you had the hearing before that sunday i don't know what was probably maybe a couple of months mm. Mm. Yeah. So again, that's a testament. So it wasn't immediate. It yep. was over time. Yeah. But you were still relentless in your faith, relentless in you showing up and God. Somebody type God did it. God did and it. And he's going to do it again. Yes, he will. All right. So um, we're almost finished. But other than that, um, mm-hmm. I'll throw this one to you. Have you ever received encouragement that contradicted scripture? Did you correct the person? <laughs> 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 um, so I I get a lot of I get a lot of stuff from people. Of that's sometimes it's wrong, and I mean sometimes they don't they really they try wrong. their best. Yeah, sometimes they try their best, but sometimes they're trying to like get you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I try to really like be like they don't know what they're doing. Like yeah. I don't know what they think I am. The great powerful eyes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know everything. So bro, what? Um, but usually when people try to encourage me. I think they think they're helping, and it's usually like, oh my gosh, like I know you're so tired. Like you're going mm. to the church again? Like how do you do all that? Like yeah. how do you manage that? Like are you, you know? And I and I think in their zeal and in their quest to be helpful and look out for me, um, it's really trying to distract me from what I'm called to do. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do also understand that there's grace for those people because they don't get it. They yeah. don't understand. Yeah. They don't understand the urgency of what we do in terms of the gospel and yeah. just all, in, in anywhere we serve. Like you don't have to be a teacher to be on a mission for the gospel. Right. You can be doing anything. Okay. Um, and so I usually do. I'm like as much as I can, right? Depending on the person, especially if they're a non-believer. I'm like, no, this is this is a part of who I am. Like I'm mm-hmm. not doing anything. Number one, that I don't want to do. Um, and number two, that is outside of the strength I've been given to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. This would only be, it, now, hey, it does get tiring, but it would yeah. only be unbearable if I was doing it in my own strength. Absolutely. It would only be Absolutely. not doable if I was running on my energy. Yeah. Um, but because I have a higher calling, because I have greater strength outside of myself, um, mm-hmm. I'm able to, to navigate those things. And so that's usually what I try to tell them as quickly as I can yeah. um, without being too annoyed, um, depending <laughs> on how many times I heard it that yeah. week. Um, but yeah, and I, and I think even like that speaks to like my husband as well. Like, I, like this is how we, this is how we do life, right? And yeah. so when people don't understand that they're trying to help mm-hmm. us, even, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah. they just, they just don't get it. So I just pray for them and say, maybe, you know, Lord, one day they'll see, maybe they'll come on over yeah. uh, and I love understand, that. I love that you said but also experience the joy, like, yeah. It's not just like, oh my gosh, this is so terrible. Like, it's mm-hmm. like a joy to do this. Yeah. Um, and it does, going back to the topic, it does take the discipline of faith, right? Because there are some times when I'm like, I have to record Bible oh. study and it's gonna take three hours. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, give me the faith to believe that you're going to speak again. Yeah. Because yeah. that's really my mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, give me the faith to believe that I'm not going to run. You're not going to run out of things yeah. to say. Yeah. Give me the faith to believe that you still chose me for this. Give me the faith to persevere when yeah. I'm in my own way. Um, and everything else will be taken care of. Like, I trust you for, for the outcome. And so um, faith is definitely required in those instances, um, mm-hmm. you know, when you're on the mission. Mm-hmm. And also when you just... Living your life and putting it on display yeah. um, and showing people and giving them like a peek into into who you are. That was no, it was <laughs> another ball. Okay, guys, so we're wrapping up. This is our final question, and I'll ask the both of you. Um, so the Bible says that daily encouragement in the body of Christ helps avoid the hardening of hearts and the potential of being deceived by sin. What are some barriers to daily encouragement, and how would you encourage someone to overcome these barriers? I would say some barriers to daily encouragement. I think number mm. one, we find the most encouragement in the word. Mm-hmm. And so if we are being discouraged from reading the word, and usually that's that can be ourselves, right? I don't have time. I don't mm-hmm. know how to start. Yeah. I don't, you know, whatever mm-hmm. the, the reason we might be giving, um, that's where we could lose um, our main source of encouragement. Um, mm-hmm. And then, of course, our relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, uh, we can have barriers there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say the number one thing would be pride, right? Like, I think 
um, if you can't receive encouragement from the body of Christ in any way that it shows up, like some of what we spoke about before, yeah. whether it's like rebuke encouragement or, mm -hmm. um, you know, more positive mm -hmm. encouragement, if you're not able to receive that, I would say that that's a pride thing. Um, and I would definitely say that deliverance is your portion. Um, and also leaning on the Holy Spirit to allow you to yeah. be more open and allow you to be more receptive to his word coming from his people. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say, number one, get in the word. That's definitely going to help you um, mm -hmm. with the main source of encouragement that you need. Lean yeah. into the Holy Spirit and then also into the body of Christ that can help you with that as well. It is good. And I echo everything that she said. But <laughs> yeah. um, because pride was brought up with the first question that you asked for me, that mm -hmm. was like kind of a barrier for me receiving yeah. encouragement. Yeah. So I think uh, it's easy, it's become easy for me mm -hmm. to receive encouragement in a corporate setting. Mm -hmm. um, like because we have people who exhort and who exalt God so well yeah. and who yeah. encourage us. Um, with the actual word of God through singing through so many different forms mm -hmm. but I think it's what we get on our own mm -hmm. yeah, like, mm -hmm. okay how do I remain encouraged when I'm not yeah in a corporate setting yes right. um so like that's the word and mm -hmm. if the word isn't encouraging me like there's something Hello. to yeah. work through yeah um, that I need to pray through so I think those are some things, practical things that we could do to make sure we stay encouraged yes. um, in our own discipline. Like, yes. praying yourself through until yes. you are encouraged. Yes. Right. Um, oh, that's good to me. Praying yourself something. through until you are encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. listening yeah. to the word of God, listening yeah. to sermons until you yeah. find something to encourage you and that speaks yes. to you. Yes. Um, so I think um, just having a balance of different forms of different of all of the discipline mm -hmm. well yes you would will help your faith walk will help your encouragement um so that you don't fall into a trap where mm -hmm. pride sets in mm -hmm. or self-righteousness comes in mm -hmm. um and causes you to fall yeah you guys literally took a majority of what i was going to say <laughs> but i was going to bring it back just to the fact that we're studying all of these disciplines and like even if you if you take a look at all the barriers that you guys said and take a look at the disciplines that we're studying, there's literally one to counteract every barrier, mm -hmm. right? So Bible study, that's a discipline. Yeah. That's how you encourage yourself in the word. Mm -hmm. If you are tempted to isolate yourself or you're used to being alone, we have fellowship, we have celebration, we have worship. Like yeah. I think every discipline speaks to a barrier and an obstacle that will prevent that's a good. believer from coming to Christ, from yeah. growing in community and growing with God as well. Yeah. So. That sums today up. Do you guys have any final thoughts? No, just self and the Lord. A, I was like, I'm going to fall So yeah, we pray that you guys were encouraged by this conversation. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We would love to read them, see them, see how you guys are communicating with each other. Um, and stick around as we continue through the remainder of the discipline, because I know you guys are going to be thoroughly blessed. So see you next week. Bye.